like Kronos, Oleron's potentially troubling to build with. Do I focus basic attacks, damaging abilities, a bit of both, or something else entirely? I'm here to say that after honestly not that much time playing him, but a whole lot of time studying him, I am under the impression it is probably best to build for his basic attacks. And I'll throw in some pretty unpopular opinions along the way through this video. Much of this video is going to be reading deeply into the logic behind his abilities and try to back my points up. So if you don't already have a substantially strong knowledge and understanding of Olorun, then this might be a bit dense, just prepare for that. It's a short one still. First of all, let's start with a pretty unoriginal build for him. With some variants, depending on the situation, start with either Hunter's, Mages, or Attacker's Blessing. I'll be honest, the one thing I don't know about Attacker's Blessing that I want to find out is if penetration applies to both his basic attacks and abilities. If someone wants to comment that, that'd be nice. And then, get a Health Chalice, probably, and Basic Boots. Purification and Aegis are good options for him relic-wise, and in that order, I'd get them. Then get, in an order somewhat like this, Book of Thoth first, finish the boots, maybe switch those, then get Bancroft's Talon, I really wish I could reasonably run Pythagorean's piece, but eh, it's okay. Then get Demonic Grip for very tasty penetration. Then a Hastened Ring, which you could switch out for a Spear of Desolation, and then sell your start and buy the next item, which in this case, because I'm getting Hastened Ring first, is Spear of Desolation. After that, you sell your boots, get the little speed consumable, and buy either Divine Ruin or Telkine's Ring. In this build, with Telkine's Ring, you're wasting a little bit of attack speed with your X enabled. It's only like 0 0.06, so it's not too important, but... You know, depending on if you're valuing penetration or attack speed more, make your decision there. Time for some really unpopular opinions. I don't think it's worth maxing Oleron's ult initially. The literal only thing that scales is a cooldown. And given how significant it is in a team fight, which in Conquest, don't they don't really happen every sub 100 seconds, the gain's kind of weak. All but one of his other abilities scale in multiple ways, and his square heavily benefits from his passive, his killer poke, and benefits his X. So I think that's worth maxing first. Though, I could respect maxing his X instead, but that probably depends a lot on how you build and play. I myself max his square, but again, that's probably up to you. Don't get me wrong, I think his ult is really groundbreaking and powerful as smite ults go, but the first level of it is by far the most powerful spike from abilities he'll get in the whole game. After that, leveling non-ult abilities spike his power much more than leveling his ult. It's only 10 seconds off, think about it. Think about it! I still have his ult, as it speeds up literally everything you do, and I, I mean everything, so I'm talking ability charging times, casting times, projectile speed, dash speed if you're like dashing as blown up, movement speed, and most importantly for Olorun, his basic attack speed. The basic attack speed increase goes past the 2.5 cap because it's simply increasing the speed at which the animation goes, and that's really incredible for him, even more so if you have someone like Ao Kuang on your team. Potentially the most interesting ult in the game, and uh, it's just not worth maxing out. You just don't really gain much past the first level. And now regarding his passive, the crit cap at 70% is really hard to reach under normal circumstances. Only at end game is it reached, sometimes. With this build, it is, but that's if you have all the potions going. Well, maybe just the 500 gold potion. With no potions activated, with Bancroft's freaking out, I'm talking like max, max stacks on it, you get up to 67%. And then if you did do the 500 gold potion, you would reach 70, but... You know, you could swap in a rod of Tahuti instead of, I don't know, Telkines or something. Then yes, you can get 70% with no potions, with Bancroft's maxing out. But you're probably not spending more than 50% of your combat in that damaged state. I hope, though. I mean, that'd be pretty badass. The bottom line is, Olorun, like the vast majority of Titan Forge's characters, is super friggin' cool. I'm talking super cool, and I do think that Smite is in a wonderful place right now, largely because of these characters. I wouldn't say it's better than ever, but it's pretty damn good. New character and content is quite frequently dropped. I'm sorry for the long wait between videos. I've been busy hunting for a tasty job post-graduation and playing lots of Titanfall 2 and Apex, things that it would behoove you to visit my channel and watch. I absolutely go ham. Got 70 kills in Skulltown a few days back. Yeah! See ya. Thanks for watching. I'll probably post more on Olorun soon.